Continuing on with how Shauna is processing everything, one of my favorite lines, I think it comes up in episode three, is when she's got the gun and she says, my hand isn't shaking because I'm afraid it's because I want to do this so badly. Mm-hmm. How, how do you define her bloodlust? Is it bloodlust because she has a drive to kill or is it something that's specifically triggered by the need to protect? I don't know if it, I, I think it's a, it's a tricky it feels almost a bit like trying to psychoanalyze myself. Um, I honestly wonder if part of it is there's so much that she's not feeling, there's so much that she's not dealing with and things that she's trying to forget. And so she lives in a kind of extended state of numbness for a lot of her life where she's just pushing things away. And that's an easy way to get adrenaline and to feel something and to be like, oh, wait, I am a human being by doing something absolutely insane. And she remembers, oh, I like that. I like that feeling. And she's always liked that feeling, even before she crashed in the wilderness. There was something like a little bit wrong with her that made her seek that feeling out. So I think now she's just sort of like trying to figure out how much she can just get that feeling back without killing another person or doing something absolutely crazy. Um, But also over the course of the season, you know, you can't push things down forever. They're going to come out. Speaking of that, they do come out at the police station. And I I feel like that might be one of the most truthful beats for the character than we've seen the entire season. So when you're playing a moment like that, what what justifies that happening then for you? Why that particular moment? And why expose all of that truth to a complete stranger? That's a really good question. (laughs) That's such a strange thing to do. I just feel like she works so hard to stop herself from doing things that then things just happen. She's just operating from just adrenaline and fear and panic, and she just, she doesn't even, I feel like it's like she blacks out kind of. For me personally, like I'm a John Reynolds super fan, so I wanted a scene with him. I was like, I just want a scene with him. I just want to do anything. <laughs> so even though I was like, this is insane what she's doing in the scene, I wasn't going to ask any questions in case someone took the scene away because it's with John Reynolds and I just love him so much. I don't blame you. Oh my God, it was so fun. It's like endlessly fascinating analyzing these characters. Christina, a specific line and more more importantly, a specific reaction shot that I love of yours is after Elijah says the line, maybe I'm just a bored Moriarty looking for his Sherlock because they give you a really nice long reaction shot where the entire time we see the wheels in your head turning. Can you kind of walk us through what it's like reacting to something like that and have her make a decision where she's not voicing the decision she's making. Well, that uh, that part is is fine. I, I love when I get to just do things with my face and not have to say stuff. Um, but I but we did. I haven't seen that episode, and we did multiple different versions of that take. So I'm not sure which one they used. I thought it was great. What were the two most polar opposite uh, creative choices you made while playing that scene? Well, we were playing with, you know, playing with this idea that, you know, if she's a character that's never had anybody really be that interested in her and most people know to run away and to shun her and all of this stuff, how would this person react to all of a sudden somebody wanting, somebody pursuing her? Um, And I very much felt like she would just think there was something wrong with that person, um, which I feel like is is a lot of how it's played um, for, for many of the episodes. Um, and then I think, you know, I kind of always want for her to be fight, you know, fighting her, um, her hopes and fighting what she thinks would be an amazing outcome because she's so used to it never being given to her that I I don't think that she's just going to be like gung-ho yes this is amazing Ah." Um, so I think we did like several different versions of complicated feelings it's very very good I can assure you that Lauren I have a feeling you probably haven't seen this particular reaction shot but there was one moment that I was waiting for of yours the entire time the point where they're all at Lottie's compound because like we see Lottie and I, I had a sense of what everyone's reaction to seeing Lottie at that point was going to be except for Vans so what was it like figuring out the 
right reaction for her to have the first time she laid eyes on Lottie after all these years. Oh, I don't know if it was right, but uh, it was what I did. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess that Van was a, a very early believer and um, early uh, acolyte into Lottie's world in the wilderness into her belief system and I think adult Van as a grown-up she's like completely skewed that and thought like that's that's bullshit and it's like that's uh uh something that happened at a crazy time and I can just put that away and it wasn't real and being face to face with it again is just uh, shocking and jarring and and something you know, in this character is very much closed down. And that that's like the the very beginning of something being cracking open. Very successful with that. It's mainly focused on your reaction in Simone's and it's just like emotion bursting off of the screen in a way that made it so hard that that's where our press screeners cut off. I couldn't stand it. Oh. I'll end with this question for all three of you. I love focusing on the value of a good scene partner. Can you name a particular moment in the first uh, six episodes of season two where a scene partner gave you what you needed in order to access something in your own character? Oh my God, that's such a good question. Wow, well, oh, you're great. Um, I would say Elijah was constantly giving me everything that I needed for the scenes to work. I mean, he was just making the scenes work all the time. Um, so, yeah, I can't pick a single moment because he just, it was, he he really carried so much of those scenes, so many of those scenes. You two are perfect together. That cadence is just spot on. <laughs> I think for me, like, doing, like, sex scenes and stuff like that is always awkward. And I'm very, very grateful to have Warren. Like, he and I now have such a trust with each other and there's that scene in the first episode where we go into the art studio and have sex and like I'm just so I remember just feeling so back at work and like oh my god um and being so grateful that I have this trust with him and we can really talk about things and also like we have like a thing that feels like a couple and we're very like natural with each other and He's just, he's also very funny. He's always really fun to work with, yeah. You two are great yet again. Sarah is crushing it she's, this season. She's amazing. Really, really good. Yeah. How about for you, Lauren? A scene partner oh, that you really well, appreciated. I mean, just, I know that in some respects I'm not meant to talk about it, but but I obviously got to play some amazing, really lovely scenes with Tawny Cypress, who's a beautiful actor, and um, just I mean, she's just a great person to work with and uh, the ability to play and, and be light and fun and both on set and in the scenes. And um, I don't know, I think it was just very supportive and I'm really grateful for her work. And my one regret on this show is that I don't get to two scenes with Liv. <laughs> I wish yeah. that I could... Um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm such I'm such an admirer of their work and I... I um, for obvious reasons and I that's the one the one person I wish I could work with. 